Hey there, everybody. It's Pastor Jason with our daily devotional in James. Today we're in James chapter 3, and we're going to be talking about making sure that you're not all talk and no show. So let's pray, and we'll get started. Father, thank you so much for an opportunity to love on you and praise you, Father. We just look for opportunities to be your servants, your humble servants, Father. It's in your name I pray. Amen. You're going to forgive the glare on the glasses. I got new glasses coming. Hopefully that'll settle the issue. Uh, here we go. James chapter 3, verse 1. Not many should become teachers, my brothers, knowing that we will receive a stricter judgment, for we all stumble in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a mature man who is able to control his whole body. Now, when we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we also guide the whole animal. And consider ships, though very large and driven by fierce winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So too, though the tongue is a small part of the body, it boasts great things. Consider how large a forest fire, a forest a small fire ignites. And the tongue is a fire. The tongue, a world of unrighteousness, is placed among the parts of our bodies. It pollutes the whole body, sets the course of life on fire, and it is set on fire by hell. Every sea creature, reptile, bird, or animal is tamed by and has been tamed by man, but no man can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. We praise our Lord and Father with it, and we curse men who are made in God's likeness with it, praising and cursing coming out of the same mouth, my brothers, these things should not be this way. Does a spring pour out sweet and bitter water from the same opening? Can a fig tree produce olives, my brothers, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can salt water spring, can, neither can a salt water spring yield fresh water. Who is wise and has understanding? He should show his works by good conduct with wisdom's gentleness. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your heart, don't brag and deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For, for where envy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and every kind of evil. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceful, uh, peace-loving, gentle, compliant, full of mercy, and good fruits without favoritism and hypocrisy. The fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who cultivate peace. James chapter 3. Make sure your faith isn't just words, but actions as well. I find it interesting as he continues this thought from uh, chapter 2 yesterday, where he says, to make sure your faith has deeds, that it has fruit that shows the work of your faith. And here he's saying, make sure you're not just all show and no go, right? That you have more than just words to show your faith. Uh, that wisdom dictates that you are going to do works by good conduct with wisdom's gentleness. So your your the words that you would say, the words that you would encourage people with are going to encourage you to act and be holy and do the same things and thusly make a larger opportunity for the truth. If we're looking at how to, like how would you further study this? Wisdom, a great word to study. Do a word study. I find what's called a concordance. Many Bibles have them in the back. You can probably look them up online. That's a concordance. And it gives you the verse references where certain words appear. Doing a word study on wisdom and what the Bible has to say about wisdom. What a wonderful way to spend a week. That's for sure. And also just words. Like I think, you know, a good thing to study too is how we use our words. Our tongue is a fire. I find it interesting how easy the Christian culture has become the cancel culture. And we need to make sure we are 
being very wise with our words, being gentle, being peace-loving, being compliant and full of mercy and good fruits, rather than quick to tear anybody down. So what are you going to study? What, what does this drive you to study? Or maybe it drives you to change something in your behavior. I hope James 3 was a blessing to you. Go on out, be a blessing to those around you with your words and deeds today. And I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow with James 4.